This is a diminishing returns curve. Depending on the context, sometimes it will level off here, or sometimes it will begin to decrease. What it says in a sentence is, for every extra bit of input, there is a smaller increase in output, i.e. the returns are diminishing. Let's say going to the gym six times a week gets you the best results possible. Sick, so let's just train six times a week then, done. But what if I told you that you could get 95% of those gains training just five times a week? Now there's a choice to make. Is that extra session worth the extra gains? And what if training four times a week actually gets you 85% of the gains? Now, which are you gonna go for? The question here is, what's actually worth doing? Where's the line where it stops being worth it? Isn't that what everyone really wants to know? If you're just a normal dude, you wanna get in good shape, look decent on your holiday pictures, what's worth doing? And what should you probably not bother wasting your time, energy, or money on? That is what I'm gonna try and answer in this video. I do have to make some assumptions to do that, but I'm not gonna qualify every single statement saying, it depends on the individual and your specific circumstances. I think this is an occasion where it's probably worth having a solid opinion. I'm gonna go through the basics that I think if you did consistently over a long period, would eventually get you 90 to 95% of the gains that you'd get if you did absolutely everything right, except doing everything right would take like way, way, way more effort, you know what I mean? Like I'm saying personally, I think this is the sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone for return on investment, if you will, because that last 5% of gains, it takes like 50% more effort, right? I don't think it's worth it. Okay, let's blast through some training basics to begin with. You should average between four and five weight sessions per week. You can get in shape with three, but four to five will be significantly better. The difference between four and five won't be massive, but it will be something. Don't bother training more than five times a week. For most people, it's unnecessary, and for some, it's actually counterproductive. Follow a program and track your lifts. Unquestionably worthwhile because it's very low effort and it's very high reward. It's probably less effort to follow a program than it is to make up a new workout every time you go into the gym. And the jump in progress that you'll see going from not following a program to following any half decent one will likely be bigger than going from a decent to a good program. So. Don't even worry too much about which one specifically. The phrase cookie cutter program has bad connotations, but the truth is that's all most people need. And it's usually either cheaper than something personalized or free, which is still obviously cheaper than something personalized. You know what I'm saying. For training splits, basically choose anything that's not a body part split. Full body, PPL, and upper, lower variations and combinations, they're all fine. I'd rank them like this, but the difference between these probably isn't worth caring about. If you can hit each muscle twice a week, that's significantly better than once a week, and almost as good as three times, so don't go out of your way to do more. If you can't manage twice a week, just get as close as possible. Twice every 10 days, you'll be doing fine. 16 plus sets per week for each major muscle group as a minimum will get you the vast majority of the gains, and it'll also allow you to split the work up nicely into four sets of four exercises over two different sessions. Going above 20-ish sets per week probably isn't necessary and isn't worth it for most people. Take most of your sets within a few reps from failure and hit failure once or twice a week for each muscle. More than that will take more effort, come at a higher recovery cost and probably won't result in more gains. 18 to 24 total working sets and 60 to 90 minutes of lifting for each workout is going to get you basically all the gains possible. Well, oh, pretty close. Nutrition. It is undoubtedly worth it for everyone to track macros and calories when on a cut, but probably not worth it for most people to track on a bulk unless they're in danger of eating so much they gain fat too fast or so little they don't gain. Include a decent protein hit as part of your breakfast, lunch and dinner, then a fourth protein hit as part of a snack somewhere would be ideal. Don't worry about meal timing or individual macro breakdown of each meal. If you eat pretty normally, that'll average out and become fairly inconsequential. Don't be setting your alarm for like 3am to wake up and have a protein shake. That's just abstract behaviour, mate. You know, you need to go for a clinical assessment if you're doing that kind of shit with a, someone who 
you know what I'm saying? It's worth getting 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound body weight over the course of the day. Beyond that, you're gonna start spending a lot of money on protein, probably for little to no benefit. Definitely don't bother going super high protein. I'm not gonna include all the basic general health considerations like eat some fruit and fibrous veg, etc. because obviously that's worth it because you can't build muscle if you're deceased. Actually being dead is somewhat catabolic to say the least. Just eat healthy, obviously that's worth it. You know what I mean? Supplements. There are basically only two supplements that I'd say are without question worth it for pretty much everyone who wants to build muscle and look sick. Whey protein and creatine. You don't have to get the most expensive, ultimate, hydrolyzed whey protein isolate. A whey concentrate powder won't have quite as high protein content, but it's unlikely that that's gonna be the difference between hitting and not hitting your protein requirements, so the vast majority of people should just go for the cheaper option. Although not essential if you can get enough dietary protein elsewhere, I would say the convenience of having a whey on hand if it results in a higher average protein intake is worth it. Creatine is cheap and it works. It will make a difference, right? In terms of improving your physique, you could literally spend a tenner on a basic ebook program and 20 quid on some creatine monohydrate. That's probably the best 30 quid you could possibly spend. There are lots of other supplements that can make a difference, but on the premise of this video, considering cost, convenience, and effort to reward ratio, there's nothing that I'd confidently say most people should definitely buy. They're all pretty much things that just might contribute to that final 5%. This is not an exhaustive list. There are things that I haven't mentioned directly, but that are implied. Your exercise selection, for example, that's something that can make a big difference to your progress over time, but if you're following a half decent program, it should already be covered within the remit of that program. There is one thing though that I haven't mentioned, and that's the thing that is both the greatest effort, but also the thing that provides the greatest reward, and that is consistency, the simple act of turning up. Not every day, not six days a week, but just for some days, even just for one day, every week. Earlier in the video, I said that these are the things that will eventually get you 90 to 95% of the gains. The key word is eventually, and you might look at that and think, eventually sounds like it's really far away, but you know what's further away than eventually? Never, right? And that's when most people will get there, precisely never. Here's the good news, right? After the first few years of lifting, making gains becomes reasonably difficult. That wasn't the good news, it's coming next. Keeping gains, actually pretty easy. That part was the, that was the good news. That has been my personal experience and it's also backed up by some studies on muscle loss. You might be in the fortunate position where you can step up your training and make some gains for a few months of the year. For the rest of the time, your job is simply not to lose gains. If you eat enough calories and protein, don't go out drinking every night and still try and shift some weight a few times a week, that ain't too difficult. So when you zoom out over a 10 plus year period, the majority of that might not be optimal training or anywhere near optimal. The majority probably won't be periods in which you were actively gaining muscle. But even if there are just sporadic periods here and there, and the rest of it is simply maintaining, you're gonna end up looking categorically sick on the beach, right? Officially, objectively sick, right? And what you're really rewarded for is just continuing to turn up in some capacity year after year. Not being optimal, but simply being persistent. And herein lies the real benefit of being suboptimal. The benefit of not trying your hardest is that it can enable you to try for the longest. So the biggest thing that is worth doing is simply something. Just do something, but do it every week. That's, I think that's all I've got, to be honest. That's, that's me. See ya. George Lenny is my hero.